I'm so excited for this video. I'm say, feel free to jump in at any time. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally like Vinnie Jones, Sheffield United. I'm, I'm pumped. So this is more a video for you than it is for me, isn't it? Yes, it's going to be an education for you. I don't really know much about football, but I do know that snapping someone the fucking half is considered to be a big no-no, which is why I'm very excited to talk about Vinnie Jones, a man who did exactly that in three seconds in a match once. Vinnie Jones is just from an era when footballers were somewhere else, isn't it? Yeah, well, basically, if you look at today's football, where it's all just you know, falling about diving, we've all seen yeah, we've all yeah. seen the clips of like football player gets tapped on shoulder, yeah. goes down like a sniper round, just hit them. <laughs> My favourite being like when two football players are doing like you know the classic like you know man thing of putting their foreheads yeah. together like oi oi oi, and they both push forward at the same time and both go down. Yeah, yeah, that is clear. That is clear. I don't get who believes it. That's what I don't understand. Like, obviously, surely the referee must be able to look at it and go, you're clearly making this shit up. <laughs> no one. I, I get it. If you're running at like 24 miles an hour yeah. and someone taps the back of your ankle, you're going to go flying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I get that and I understand that. But like, when they go into like the dying swan routine and they go down like a deer being shot in an art house film, just like in black and the black and white happens and like they fall to the floor and just like it fades to black and the wasted logo from Grand Theft Auto goes up over yeah. them. Have you ever seen a Key and Peel skit of this? I think so, yeah. There's a Key and Peel, there's an amazing skit of like a football player who gets hit and it goes all into slow motion. <laughs> And he like goes down on the floor and like he's getting carted out dead. <laughs> he just runs back on scores a goal. It's fucking great. Yeah, well, Vinnie Jones basically couldn't play now because he'd be sent off every game. Because, yeah, um, he was back when football players would just like get hit and then keep going. Yeah. So like, basically like female football players today. Like you must have seen like the comparison picks of like, oh, Here's like, you know, the winning team from the female World Cup. And it's like one got their head split open. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And she's still playing. It's like, and here's just like a clip of the highest played player, male player in the world. And he's just down on the floor. <laughs> so, but Vinnie Jones, like, no, none of that. As much as he played for Sheffield United, which is my team, yes. he was most famous for playing for Wimbledon when they were called the Crazy Gang because they were literally 11 solid blokes who just knocked the hell out of anyone who yeah. played against And no one wanted to play against him. And there's that famous shot, isn't there, of him grabbing someone by the nuts yep. <laughs> and then crushing them with his hand. Yep, as he just walks past him, just squeezes those testes. And a picture of which I'm presuming is right behind me now because it's one of the most famous images from his career. <laughs> yeah, that, that's just Vinny in a nutshell. Because it reminds me a lot of uh, as a, a wrestler, I think it's called uh, Yusef Ishmael who was known as the Terrible Turk. He's the first person to have that nickname, a Turkish oil wrestler, who during one bout against another Turkish guy, and they, the fight was so vicious, a group of policemen had to come in and then hit them with like batons to pull them apart. And then they asked like Ishmael's like, opponent, like, do you want to press charges? And he goes, certainly not. We were only wrestling. <laughs> yeah. and it's like, I bet Vinnie Jones would be like that. Like, when he, like, he snaps someone completely in fucking half, and it's like, referee goes up and goes, really, Vinnie? I'm just playing football. Yeah. It's a solid tackle, I got the ball. <laughs> Like, the, the thing I love about this though is that Vinny has managed to um, like translate that into a very successful acting career where he plays off that image. Yeah. And what's your favourite moment of him, like you know, on the silver screen? It's, it's not him per se, but in Mean Machine because yes. it's all about Vinny Jones. And what we're going to talk about is that fast foul. I like to think there's that one bit when the monk Jason Statham does it. It had to have been it like, a to. knowing nod to what, like, you know, yeah. we're about to discuss in a moment. Well, mine has to be his brief cameo in the film Euro Trip. I've not seen well, this. Euro no. Trip, they go to England, and in that film, they end up in a group of soccer hooligans led by Vinnie oh. Jones. Oh. And they somehow, I think it's Manchester United they support, yeah, and they yeah. say, We support Manchester United. We're from, like, the American chapter of the fan club. And, like, all the football hooligans look at them and go, Yeah! And then Vinnie Jones does. And this is a skill I want to learn when he opens two bottles of beer with his eyes. Where he just shoves the bottles into his eyes and goes, Gah! And I can open a bottle of beer or anything, but I can't do it with my fucking eyeballs. <laughs> Doesn't he do like a series of adverts for the NHS? Yeah, the staying alive one. Where he teaches people, like, fun facts in the UK, you can learn 
like how to do CPR from Vinnie Jones. Evidence now. Look lively. First call 999. Then you do hands only CPR and no kissing. And I just love that part where he comes on like dressed like a traditional like hard man gangster from like <laughs> East End of London. Well, first you need a geezer who's been recently knocked out and just dragging a dead body. <laughs> it's like, here's one I made earlier, like it's Blue Peter or some shit. Here's one I made earlier. Let's bring it back to Vinny's three second foul. Yeah, I should probably explain that how like that we are clarifying it's a three second foul and it's three seconds after the whistle blew. Yeah. And for anyone not comprehending like why it's just so amazing, it's because when you do that, both teams have to stand on the opposite ends of the pitch. <laughs> and somehow Vinny Jones was able to get all the halfway across the pitch and then take someone the fuck down in front of the referee and then get the whistle blown for this to happen. And according to him, it's like I had a rivalry of some very unfortunate yeah. player whose name will be listed below. I think in his own words he eyed him up. <laughs> and he saw him and went, I'm going to fucking have him right now. And he set, he started sprinting as the um, I, you know the, the ball was being set up for the ring. And according to him, he was at full sprint at exactly the halfway line as the referee blew the whistle. Yeah. So in that, so I give him like, he was at full pelt as the whistle blew. And he just ran and just completely took this guy the fuck out. And I sort of worked it out that as the ref looked at both uh, goalkeepers, as he put the whistle to his mouth, I set off. So as he actually blew, I was crossing the line at full speed. <laughs> Wasn't there a player who did that recently broke someone's leg? Yes. Which, which player? Oh. You'll know this story more than, better than I do. God. Like someone like, is it Roy Keane? Yeah, yeah, oh, so the no, Roy this Keane. Story, like, this is fucking unbelievable. Yeah, so Roy Keane and I think you're called Alfinger Harland. In, in effect, Roy Keane fouled Harland, but doing so broke his own leg. And Harlan got a, like you know got up, went over to him, and what what yeah, ever you know, shouted at him. So I remember yeah. like it was an altercation where the player was like, "You're not injured, you're not injured, get yeah. up, you coward." Yeah, that's like, no, it. I brought my fucking. Leg. Yeah. So then Roy Keane basically, when the next match happened, like just waited for Harlan to get the ball, and just went up and just honestly, it's the hardest kick I've ever seen. Ultimate revenge. I hope as well that while he was training, he only trained that one leg. <laughs> it's like, I want to see a training montage of just like Roy Keane in the gym set to like push it to the limit. And just every time he's trained, all he's got is just a picture of that other player yeah. with just like a circle drawn around his leg. And he's just like in a classroom studying human anatomy. It's like, oh, where do I kick the leg to like, you know, optimum breakage and agony of what inflicted upon this man? People are probably thinking right now, we're going to be out to Vinny, like a three second foul. That has to be the fastest foul in football. But no, we're going to like you know do our pub quiz now, saying actually no, the fastest foul in football history goes to a player called Lee Todd, who got I think a two-second foul. The referee blew the whistle right next to Lee Todd's ear, to which Mr. Todd responded, "Fuck me, that was loud." Which the referee then heard, blew the whistle again, and booked him for like you know uh, foul language. <laughs> <laughs> and that's him. He's just fucking great. It's like. Oh, start of the match, fuck me, that was loud, and he blows it again. You're booked, get off. And I think that's the image I want to leave people off of British football right now. <laughs> Just like Vinnie Jones, like complete, like he ended a guy's bloodline on the pitch purposely and like willfully. And then he, got, like, he gets a warning for it. Lee Todd just says, fuck me, and gets a red one. So Adam, as the resident football expert of the channel, which is not a role I want you to feel proud of because I don't watch football and neither does anybody else involved with the channel, but I'm assuming you've now got more stories of fouls from, I you know, the history of the sport that you'd like to share with the audience at home. Yeah, there's one which I was there in person and I literally watched it. My team, one of my players. And he, you are he, that. You, talk, you own the team. I, I am the team. I am the club. <laughs> And it's called Jay McEvely, and if whoever's editing it, I will send you the video. Okay. And so you took the vi you got video footage. Oh yeah. Okay. And he literally, I, he was two and a half feet in the air, two footed, hit this bloke in the side of legs who did a flip. There's a touch. Oh, that's a red card every day of the week. That's shocking. Sorry. And then he literally got up, put his hand up to the referee like, "Yeah, sorry." A referee gave him a yellow card, and literally just twenty eight thousand of us just went. What? How the fuck is he not sent off? There's a, a bit by Lee Evans about this where he said, and I think he just reiterates a, th like a thought a lot of people have about football, where it's not that players foul each other, it's not that players go down and fake it, it's that they'll do it and then pretend that no one saw. Yeah, I think yeah. the Lee Evans joke is like, they'll snap a guy in half, like 100,000 people have seen you do it, <laughs> like a million people at home watching on TV, and they're going, what? 
<laughs> what? No, so I didn't. And the referee will come up and go, I didn't. It's like, just ask anyone in the audience. It's so stupid. Didn't they recently bring in, or they're trying to bring in, like, it's to the video referee? Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous because it's just so dull. Like, literally every time there's a goal now, you can't really celebrate because they've got to go and review it. Go get the video And then referee. you wait for him to go, yes, that is fine, and then you can celebrate. Well, I do like, though, uh, from back in the day, there's all those goals that like, should not have been allowed. Like, I think at one of the World Cups, is it the, like, the famous the keeper who grabs the ball at the back of the net yeah. and then drags it back before it goes in? Or, like, the, cla the Maradona? The is, is the famous one, the hand of God. The hand of God. Where he literally just put, he puts his hand on his head to like guide the ball in and got away with it. It's the fact that he's five foot six and our keeper was six foot five. And he got it past him. Yeah, and Maradona got the ball. It's like, uh, okay. Yeah, but I just love all that stuff, like all the controversy about like when it's so obvious that this was a wrong decision and they have to stick with it because it's what the referee decided. <laughs> I think the worst thing I've ever seen, and it was fucking hilarious, was the ball didn't even like go near the net. It was like three foot wide. It just it just missed the net, and the referee gave a goal, and everyone's like, "What?" <laughs> and a goal has been given to Reading, and clearly it didn't cross the goal line. Bear in mind, the player who had the shot knows full well that it didn't go in. He didn't go in. When the referee gives the goal, there's a bit of confusion. He starts celebrating. Of course, <laughs> why not? <laughs> referee decision's final. Like referee just rewriting the laws of physics right now. Let's go for it. I fucking love football. It's just, it's just when that happens and then they have to overturn the referee's decision, it's like, oh, you can't do that. It'll like, you know, affect the integrity of the sport <laughs> as we have a referee just clearly calling a non-goal as a goal. I just want one game, hopefully during the World Cup, like during a final, where the referee just goes full heel yeah. and just starts <laughs> very clearly just being biased against one team, like, fuck you, you didn't win. There was a TV show called Balls of Steel. And I don't know if you saw, there was one episode where they had a guy called The Bastard in Black, and he was a referee, and literally at the kickoff, you know, right, he yeah. blows a the whistle, they pass the ball, blows it, and ball! <laughs> handball! Well, I honestly don't know how you could give a handball for that, I really do think he needs some sort of anatomy lesson here. And literally sends all the players off, and he's like, he starts, he sends everyone off, he's like, do you want off? Following around red card, and they just chase him off the pitch. <laughs> Oh, man. Gotta love it.